So we're here in Edale, which is in the Peak District, for our third 2016 Hen Harrier Day, and this is one of the 12 which is taking place across the UK. This How many people here have seen a Hen Harrier on an English grouse moor this year? No, this year, no. this year. One, two, three. Three people. That's disgusting. It's appalling. We should all put our hands up and say, yes, we've seen a wonderful hen harrier this year on a moorland near us in England. It's appalling. This year we have three nesting pairs of hen harriers in the whole of England. It's ridiculous. We should have 300 pairs of nesting hen harriers in England. Why haven't we got them? Because they've been illegally killed. That's why. We should have 60 hands to show you how many harriers we've got. I've got one hand. I'm not even using all my fingers to show you how many pairs of hen harriers we've got. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we must do something about it. We must do something about it now. And all these people here turning up today is a good step towards that. I just had a chat with Mark. And now the petition to ban driven grass shooting has reached over 74,000 people. And also, um, young people, why, why should they why should they care? Why should they be bothered about what's happening in the Uplands and what's going on? Uh, so, uh, I'll start with the... Yeah, no, so just do as you like, yeah. I don't want to be offensive at all, so no, old no. people, but they're no, not, no. not, not going to be around forever. Yeah. So, uh, so hello, Peak Hen Harry Day 2016. Woo! Yay! Today, and all this weekend, up and down the country, there is a murmuration of people. <laughs> a murmuration of great, amazing people. Amazing people who really care about the environment we live in and all share together. However, today is a paradox of celebration and awareness. We're here to celebrate a beautiful, incredible bird. We're here to celebrate Circus Cyanus, the hen harrier, but also protest about its consistent and disgusting persecution. But it's also about it helps the economy of the Peak District and the County of Derbyshire. Millions of people come to visit, to view nature in all its diversity. And within that, the hen harrier has got an important part to play. And I want to do whatever I can to make sure that happens. Every year you kind of think, oh, here's another year. Maybe people will be fed up. Maybe people won't be as keen. Yeah. But uh, now it keeps growing. Yeah. And um, I think that's because of the strength of our case. I mean, killing protected wildlife is wrong. On how far argue. we've come together. So two years ago, on a day very similar to this, <laughs> <coughs> apart from the fact it was a bit wetter, <laughs> we had the first Hen Harrier Day. There were four events, but the biggest and the best was here in Derbyshire yeah. in the Derwent Valley where 570 people joined together to protest and to celebrate, to protest against wildlife crime and to celebrate this amazing bird. So that was the first year. There were four events that year. Last year there were seven events. This year there were 12 events. So we're moving forward together. How many of you is this your first Hen Harrier Day rally? That's very good, because if we don't attract new people every year, we're not going to get 100,000 so. signatures. Doesn't mean the government's going to ban driven grass shooting the next day, funnily enough. But we will get a debate in Parliament, and that debate in Parliament will raise the issue even more. Imagine back to when you were standing in the rain two years ago. The idea that Parliament could actually debate the future of grey shooting in this country was miles away. Still might be quite a long way away, but we're getting closer all the time. Every movement for change, every improvement in ecology, in social well-being takes a while. And if you've signed the petition, I bet most of you have. Yeah. Amanda Anderson hasn't, but most of you have. <laughs> then, right, so, with me now, John Stewart, who is the general manager for the, uh, for the National Trust here in the Peak District. So, um, the, as all the National Trust own a lot of land in, within the Peak District, 
and um, a lot of the, uh, some of this is um, has, has grouse smalls and driven grouse shooting is practice. Um, however, you have your high peak um, morse vision um, program in place, um, which um, you say works towards increasing raptor populations and also contributing to nature con uh, nature conservation. Yeah. Um, has this been achievable, and do you think so? How achievable has it been, or do you think it is achievable? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is achievable, it has to be achievable, but it's not something that we're going to do overnight. And that's why we set out a long-term vision, because this needs commitment. The sort of the state of some of our sort of nature is, is not great, I mean, it, it won't be an overnight fix. Yeah. But what we have set out is a roadmap, and we started to implement that by restoring yeah. blanket bogs, um, yeah. regenerating woodlands, and starting to see a few um, of the birds of prey coming back as well. Right. Um, do you think... Um, um, it was supposed um, a man sitting, an armed man sitting in the grouse mall, and it was photographed, videoed by a, a distant bird bird watcher um, with a hen with a, with a um, hen harrier decoy. Yeah, I see yeah? The footage. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, could you this? So this happened, but does that suggest that maybe your vision, your what's happening with your vision? Does it? Is this suggested? It isn't achievable. There's still going to be still happening. Eh? I think it may indicate that, that you know it's not easy, um, but what I would say is you know as a result of that incident we went and, and met our tenant and talked to them and as a result of that, that meeting we really felt that they weren't committed to achieving the hiking world's vision. Yeah. So what we decided to do is, is terminate that tenancy early. Yeah. So it's a sad thing in a way but I think what it demonstrates is that we are committed to achieving the vision yeah. and we will. A young man called John Stewart. Is John here today? Yes, he's making his way through the crowd. And John is the National Trust General Manager for the Peak District. So he's got a huge job and a very tough job as well. And as you know, I'm sure it's already been mentioned today about the uh, plastic hen harrier incident. John was involved in that. And it was John and his organisation, National Trust, that took the very brave decision to withdraw grouse shooting licences on some of their land. Um, Right, well, yes, I'm John Stewart, I'm the General Manager for National Trust in the Peak District and it's great to see lots of people here today enjoying the Peak District National Park. I hope some of you afterwards will go and have a nice walk up there and enjoy the beautiful landscape. I want to take a slightly different tack on this and I want to talk about um, can the Hen Harrier be a symbol of renewal in our countryside? And if so, how can a body like the National Trust help with that? So, look at that, where are we? And I think we're in a time of change and a time when we can shape our future. So I think it's an really important part, but where are we with it? Well, I think the hen harrier symbolises silently and very eloquently the fact that things are far from well. Despite great efforts over the last few decades and some great yeah, achievements, I think of birds of prey, and I think about the hen harrier here, and I think things are wrong. You know, in the National Park over the last 10 years, we've seen declines in, in birds of prey in a National Park. And we think that overall in the last 70 years, there have been big declines. And for some species like the hen harrier, that's been going on a lot longer. And the National Trust have recognised this is our big challenge for the 21st century. So here I have Natalie Bennett with me, who is the leader of the Green Party. Thank you very much. You've just given my talk. And you, in your talk, you gave um, a sort of a bigger perspective of what's going on, sort of looking at different aspects. And you gave a personal touch on the idea of flooding and your first, your first visit to a grouse uh, up until up London on a grouse moor. Um, could you just give us a bit of an overview of sort of, sort of that example and uh, the ideas that you mentioned? Yeah, well what I found was I first really learned about the issues around in harriers driven grouse shooting and broader about the management laws when I went to Hebden Bridge and that was last January just after the flooding uh, and what I found was people there were telling me that you know they know that Hebden Bridge floods probably no matter what you did you would get some flooding in Hebden Bridge. Uh, but the level of the flooding was just unprecedented and totally unexpected. And I visited someone who had actually, um, uh, was, was a, a shop, uh, he put in a floodgate and the flood came six inches over the top of that floodgate, totally ruined the entire contents of the shop. And people felt like it was the management of the land above Hebrew Bridge, driven grouse shooting moors, that was the problem. Yeah. And then they took the Natalie Bennett from the Green Party, so a nice warm welcome for Natalie, it's come all about the what the management of grouse moors actually means. It's industrialization of 
some of our most beautiful, most important natural environments. And it has to stop. We all know it has been illegal to kill raptors, to kill hen harriers for decades. And yet somehow, whenever they fly over a grouse moor, whenever they try and nest on a grouse moor, they're in grave danger. We have to say this is absolutely unacceptable. And I've just met the Police and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire, and I'm sure we've all got a message for all of the police in Britain, all of the relevant forces. They have to do more. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, we have to come back to an issue, an issue of the nature of the driven grouse shooting industry. This is an industry that now, on its own account, is producing grouse numbers 100 times the natural level. The only way you do that is by severely distorting the ecosystem. You can't do it any other way. And of course, we ask the question, why are you doing this? You're doing this to shoot them. Really, if you think of an obscenity, that really is an obscenity. And in a civilised country, it's got to stop. Here now, we've got, I've got Tim Birch, who is the uh, conservation manager for the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust. Last year, we had your CEO, Joe Smith, uh, who, jo who joined us also in the Peak District, who gave a fantastic talk. Um, and it's, I think it's so important that you're involved, you've got this coalition, and um, it's just, I'd say it's just really important. But why, why do you think this is? Why is it well, you are? I mean, we're a wildlife trust, mm -hmm. so we're about defending, protecting, and restoring wildlife. So it's only natural that we would be very vocal about protecting and defending and bringing hen harriers back to our wonderful country. It's important we do not paint everybody with the same brush. As a wildlife trust, we're working very hard with many different organisations and many landowners, including many farmers. We're running a, a fantastic project in Edel with farmers in Edel. Um, a chap called Andrew Critchell, I think, is here. Are you here, Andrew? Yep. yep. Um, a wonderful project with farmers to help vaccinate badgers. We don't agree with everything with farmers about badger culling, but we're working with them on vaccination. And I think Let me just paint to you a bit of a vision about the uplands that I think we, we, we want. I think we want, in, if we're here in 20 or 30 years' time, what do I think should be here and what should we be working towards? I can, I'm going to run you through a list of what I think is possible, and at the end of it, I want you, anybody to here to tell me that's not a good idea. Okay. We're here in 20 or 30 years' time. The hen harriers are back, they're sky dancing over our, moor, over our moors. Is that a good idea? Yeah. We're here in 20 years' time, and peregrines are back in all their ancestral iris all over the moorlands where they're not at the minute. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Red kites are back in the uplands. Yeah. Why are they not here? They should be soaring all over the uplands. A friend of mine who recently moved up to Derbyshire, who I've got to know very well, I've got a lot of respect for, the first thing he told me was, Tim, where are all the birds of prey? I think it's a very, very important. Expanding woodlands from the cliffs. They're moving out up into the moorland. We have lots more wildlife for birds like hen harries to feed on. Is that a good idea? Yeah. One thing I'm really excited about is pine martins. We should have pine martins back in this wonderful landscape. I've been speaking to the Vincent Wildlife Trust and they say, Tim, we agree they should be, but we can't have them back in a minute because of the levels of persecution. Do we want pine martins back? Yeah. Amazing, and most importantly of all, I think we should be aiming to bring a pair of golden eagles back into our uplands. Is that a good idea? Let's start that journey. Please join us in the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust to help achieve that together. I think we can achieve it, and we will be here in 20 or 30 years' time. And our uplands, what majestic uplands they are! These are some of the most iconic landscapes in the whole of the UK. We want them full of wildlife. Let's get on and do it. Thank you. Well, I think it rains now. So thank you very much to all the speakers today for coming along and uh, inspiring us with their amazing uh, experiences and talks. And most of all, of course, thank you to all you guys for coming down and uh, helping us celebrate the Hen Harrier today.